Well, President Biden says he intends to visit the U.S.-Mexican border next week. This amid a growing crisis and a record number of border crossings, according to several reports. The president said he plans to visit during this trip, uh, his trip rather, to the North American Leaders Summit on January 9th and 10th. This would be his first trip to the border during his presidency. Now, this potential trip comes amid record-breaking crisis at the border, and that's why we bring in our expert here, Esther uh, Valdez-Clayton. We appreciate you coming in here and talking with us about that. Uh, Valdez-Clayton, Clayton Valdez. Either one, Valdez-Clayton. No, no, Clayton. Valdez-Clayton. I got it right the first time. <laughs> um, we're so glad that you came on here. The numbers are staggering. Uh, we were talking off-camera. 617,000 border encounters, and that was in the fiscal year. 2.3 million encounters for the full year. When you hear those numbers, what are you, how, your reaction? Unprecedented, historic. My immigration is a huge problem for America. Whether or not this administration wants to acknowledge it, it is for the states, it's for the people who live in the states, and it is for Americans. But what we've seen from the Biden administration is a humanitarian approach. They're right. taking a look at what this means for migrants, whether or not they can ask for asylum at, with Title 42, whether or not they're being housed and clothed, and handling this more as a logistic managerial administrative approach to immigration rather than seeing it from an American point of view right. which the states through governors like DeSantis and Governor Abbott in Texas have been saying we can't afford to house feed clothe we're overwhelmed and even our own local leaders are now sounding the alarm saying San Diego also can't handle 800 bust migrants let alone hundreds of thousands that the Del Rio sector has been handling so we're hoping that he addresses this next week and I was out there when a, a bus full of migrants showed up reporting on it. These people were uh, confused. They talked about really poor conditions when mm -hmm. they were in. So clearly it is a humanitarian crisis, but also the federal government is not doing enough to fix this crisis. So my question is, this is his first time going down there in his presidency, which is a pretty astounding. It's been a year. Is anything going to come out of this? Well, no policy changes because, as we know, policy is done legislatively. Right. And w even though we don't have a Speaker of the House, Jim Jordan gave an excellent speech right now in, in Congress saying number one priority for the incoming Congress has to be immigration. Why? Because it affects Americans on every walk of life. Every border state is now a border state. Whether you look at it from the drug, the mm. fentanyl um, incursions, the migrant incursions for manufacturing, for jobs, for inflation, for demographics, for education. There's not one sector in the American society that's not affected by immigration. And Biden's refusal thus far right. to even visit the border has been a huge shun to the American people's concerns. And I'm very heartened that he comes out and hopefully he comes to the Del Rio sector, takes a look at what the realities are, not just for the migrants who are living in tents. That's inhumane. Right. That's not a humanitarian, more compassionate approach, which he said that he would run to give those migrants a fair shot into coming to America, but also for the Americans who now, many of whom are complaining about the greater crime, about the fentanyl overdoses, and about concerns over a crime wave as well. You made an excellent statement. You said every state is a border state, and that is very, very true. So Biden, on December 6th, he was asked why he hasn't been to the border, and I quote, he said, there's more important things going on. Your reaction? Well, I can't imagine anything more important than what's happening at the border because, like I said, it affects our economy, our inflation, our schools, our medical care. Our own governor, Go Governor Gavin Newsom, stated that we have a $20 billion deficit that is looming because of the potential for a recession. Mm. How then are we going to afford $1 billion in expenses for migrants to come through? And that's being reiterated to for the Colorado governor, who's now busing people over to New York. Uh, New York City is sounding the alarm and saying we're in a state of emergency, right. coupled with Washington, D.C., there's busing. Basically, the states are doing the job that the Biden administration mm -hmm. on a federal level has not done. And Congress has an imperative and a duty to not just fix what's going on with the House Speaker, right. but also to get things done for America legislatively. What do I mean by that? Is because we are a nation of laws. And while we are a nation of laws, they need to obey. So if a person is, in fact, asking for political asylum, they have to follow what political asylum means. That 
means it's not about a job. It's not about greater opportunity or to escape poverty. It's about political persecution. Right. It's about a persecution on, on account of your race, your religion. That's what needs to be met. But if we're no longer going to be a nation of laws, we're no longer a sovereign nation, then let's stop playing games and say we want economic migration. And that's where the business component wins, because business is the big silent driver and why we're seeing these numbers, 2.2 million and growing, because they're the big winners. And I know you represent a lot of those folks that you talked about escaping political persecution. Esther Valdez Clayton, I've run out of time. I'd love, wanted to talk to you about Title 42, so we just got to have you back. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing your insights. Thank you for your questions, Ray.